I found out how to play Dead Cells completely wrong. Dead Cells is a game about being careful, tricky, quick with your fingers, knowing what you're up against, and knowing how to kill it. It's no exaggeration that a single hit in this game has the potential to remove over half of your health bar. With limited ways to heal, enemies that don't know how to play fair, and so many items, it becomes nearly impossible to work out what might work well together to keep that zombified body of yours still moving. Dead Cells is a thinking man's game. So of course I found a way to play the game that involves profusely bleeding over all of your opponents, injecting yourself with copious quantities of potentially volatile substances, and rushing at anything that moves with what for all intents and purposes could be a literal frying pan! That's right, I found a way to play Dead Cells like you're living on the edge of a knife, and in such a way that getting hit won't even matter because you're killing yourself faster than anything else in this game ever could hope to. This is an extremely high risk build. You are never safe. But that's what makes this fun. The general gist of it works as such. Let's say you keep rushing at your enemies without a care for your own sanity, when suddenly you get punched, stabbed, kicked, and slashed within an inch of your life. Wow, who on earth could have predicted that? This is fine. At this point, most people would think, ah, shit, I should probably heal because I'm about to fucking die, but not you. You've already come to terms with the fact that you're a walking flesh sack with a frying pan, and oh my god, you're going to keep using that damn thing if it's the last thing you do. So you grab your needle, pump yourself full of drugs, watch as your pupils dilate, and Zawaldo begins to slow down. Down. Before bleeding your entire life force onto the ground and swinging your repurposed kitchen appliance around in a desperate attempt to try and see your health bar go up. And once you're done swinging, standing breathless atop a mountain of slayed corpses and bloodied flesh, you can take solace in the fact that your health bar is now slightly higher than it was when you started your mindless rampage. But now you have a cooldown to battle through, and there are still monsters lurking around every corner. This is flying. So how does it work? This build is a ridiculous take on vampirism, and abuses the hell out of its core mechanic, which removes all of your health and turns the rest of your HP bar orange. Orange is good, because if you deal damage, the orange goes green, and this is what you want if you like the idea of staying alive. But the downside is that when your HP bar goes orange, it starts rapidly depleting. But I don't care, I'm a crazy motherfucker with a friend! Frying pan. You will never be able to fully restore it back to 100% once it goes orange because you can't deal enough damage to pull that off. The best you could realistically hope for is around 75%. Now, there's a serious risk when using vampirism. It ain't just free HP. If you use it, turn your HP orange and start smacking away if at any point you get hit. All of the orange disappears and you're left with whatever remains. So that's where the countermeasures come in. Meet Tonic. Don't like that pesky orange color? Cover that shit up with an easy clean blue. Sure, it might be a temporary fix, but who cares when your life's on the line, right? Just slap that shit on there and forget about it. It also comes with the neat benefit of letting you eat infected food for an easy to digest snack. No malaise included. Side effects may include dizziness, spinning, vomiting, screaming, blood thirst, nausea, outbursts, uncontrolled spasming, tics, dilated pupils, contracted pupils, both at the same time, and congestive heart failure. Use it your own risk. Tonic ain't a cure-all though. Taking damage in any way will still remove all of your rally, so you've got to be careful. There are two main mutations that make this build work like a charm, and one that I'd highly recommend based on personal experience. The first is disengagement. This mutation will only come in and save your ass once every two minutes, so you can't go around feeling like you're invincible. The strongest thing about it is once your health drops to 20%, it's time to go crazy. Using your skills before you hit 20% looks like this, though. Don't do that. When it works, though, it looks like this. Wow, I still have no health. This problem is solved by the second mutation required for this build, recovery. It just straight up doubles the length of time you have to get your HP back, which stops your HP looking like this and more like this. <laughs> Finally, the last mutation I'd recommend for this build, though it's certainly not a requirement, is the armadillo pack. This mutation might not look like much, but pair it up with the rampart shield and you effectively nullify all damage every time you roll for two seconds. That's pretty busted if you ask me. And of course, you don't actually need the frying pan. It might be the strongest kitchen appliance in the game, which transcends time and space and can be used to cook breakfast, but you can use other things. Like this sword! Yeah.